Hello, and to those of you joining for the first time, welcome to my ongoing quest to climb the ranks of Espire 1. This is Combat Elimination Challenge number 2. And in this video, I wanted to share a bit of what it was like working my way up the leaderboard. In the beginning, you could see that my rank was initially 15,052. The first run we're showing is one of what I like to think of as a scouting run, which is to say that I'm still learning the challenge and the ways that are available to me and the ways that are not. As an example, that door was certainly not an available path. While I am trying to maintain somewhat of a decent pace, this is still very much a feeling out process as I start learning where the enemies are going to be and where I should start thinking about expecting them in the future. There's not a lot of optimization that's happening at this stage because overall speed isn't the most important thing yet and I haven't begun to make any major routing decisions. So you can see there we're at about a minute and 9 and 16 milliseconds which brings us up to rank 321. Now looking at the overall completion time, there was about a minute 50 remaining on the clock and I'm feeling a little bit better about that path that I chose. So you'll see me start to machine that down a little bit here or at least attempt to do so. Optimization still not terribly important. This was immediately the next run and you can see I am trying to do a few different things that I think have the potential to reduce my time. We're starting to kind of form routing decisions which slowly lead to optimization. And here in the straightaway you'll see me waggle from side to side a bit as I start thinking of something later. We're at 49 seconds and 34 milliseconds which bring us to the top 100 at rank 67. The next run shown isn't immediately after, uh, but more than a few attempts as I begin to think of a few routing changes. And you'll see that here in the beginning as I immediately break to the left. Now, the thing about making any sort of routing change is it has the potential to throw a lot of your optimization and decisions right out the window as changing your route, pardon the reverse gun there, changing your route will mean that the enemy placements might be slightly, if not radically different by the time you arrive to a given area. So here we see a little bit more of that back and forth waggle as I think of something that is a high risk maneuver, but I'm not willing to attempt yet. We are at 45 and 80, which is about a four second improvement, which brings us up to rank 34, which is up about 30 spots. And this is where optimization really starts to begin, or at least that thought process. So you'll see some slight adjustments to pattern and routing as I start to find what works best for me. Uh, there's still a uh, few attempts at things, even though it's going to be suboptimal. Uh, you can see as I come around the uh, corner there, well mid-air, I'm starting to prep for what's coming next. The more you start to optimize a particular path and route, of course the more you're capable of anticipating what's to come next. Still not ready to try that high risk maneuver and we end that run at 41 seconds and 88 milliseconds bringing us up within the top 20 to rank 18. So we're getting to a place where some things are starting to become somewhat optimized and we're going to have to start doing some of the slightly riskier maneuvers. 
So I've got this path down, and I'm really going to want to get that ladder fling. It's fine at this point because we're not 100% reliant on optimization yet, so there's still plenty of room for something to go wrong and us to still be able to recover a run. The further we get into more and more optimized runs, however, the more likely a single thing can completely ruin a run. And so as you get on and on, you'll find that you end up doing more and more resets to try and gain kind of a more perfect run and really trying to focus on your consistency. And consistency is actually going to be the source of a next big change. Uh, we saw 39 and 92, which brings us into the top 15. And you can see there that I left the pistol behind going just for the SMG. One of the big decisional changes was simply to try and only grab the one gun, as trying to ensure that I got both guns would lose me about a second or two at the beginning. So I could grab the singular SMG with a higher degree of consistency, which is what this whole singular run is based on. And that consistency, however, does come at a price of requiring more bullet efficiency to make sure that if I have a singular ammunition pool, I'm not going to run out before the end. That was 36 seconds and 58 milliseconds, which puts, puts us just outside the top 10, where optimization is going to start to become really important. Here at the beginning of the run, you can see that now that I'm comfortable with working with the single SMG, I'm trying to get that grab from further away to continue to increase the smoothness of my run and machine down my time. The more you optimize something like that, the more it of itself becomes a high risk maneuver. So here we can finally see the other high risk maneuver I was hoping to try. Uh, there's a large potential for that to go wrong because uh, I'm just generally bad at it. But that brings us down to 34 seconds and about 54 uh, milliseconds which puts us just outside of the top five. Finally, you can see the smooth weapon pickup for the single weapon at range has been kind of optimized there. That is the source of a lot of resets for me though, as there are a lot of times where that pickup goes slightly wrong and I really depend on it to go smoothly. There are a lot of things that are optimized to the point of being higher risk, but still I'd say a fair amount of room for improvement. That brings us down to 33 seconds and 39 milliseconds. Finally, in the leaderboard, as you can see for this challenge, that puts us in the top three. For the time being, that's where I'm going to leave this challenge, although there's a good amount of room for further optimization. Let me know what you thought in the comments below, and expect more breakdowns of my paths to higher Aspire 1 ranks in future.